Morgan hasn't seen. So we are currently on our John Wick run. We've seen John Wick, John Wick chapter two. And now today we will be talking about John Wick chapter three, Parabellum. Parabellum. And I'm here. <laughs> yes. you sure about were you that? expecting me to say parabolum parabolum <laughs> yeah i think i probably uh, went a little crazy with that last time but who knows well i think the people enjoyed my parabolum i i hope so, so. i hope so <laughs> yes. well done janine that was a good impression of me yes. um proud of the you. intro this time guys proud what'd you think proud of you for doing the <laughs> intro hey everyone it's Morgan, and I haven't seen things. That's Janine, and she forces me to see things. That's how it works, Janine. That yes, it's fun. It's how it works. It's fun. It is very fun. Um, however, this week, uh, well, technically we both hadn't seen this movie because it was a movie yes. that didn't exist until this week. <laughs> um, John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. Uh Still don't really feel the need for the subtitle. But it was kind of fun to see I mean, it was... the subtlety of where it came from. Yes. Now, we thought it came from somewhere else last week. Yes, because we defined um, that para parabellum is what, like a machine gun? Looks Something like, like a... that. I think that's yeah. what you found out. A semi-automatic machine gun. Yeah. So we thought, okay, well, there's a lot of guns in this movie, and yeah. D and when they run out of bullets, they throw them at people. <laughs> they do throw them at people. There's a lot of gun yeah. throwing. Yes. It's extreme. But no, uh, Parabellum is uh, presumably Latin for prepare for prepare war. Prepare for war. So it's very appropriate. If you want peace, prepare for war. As said by the glorious Ian McShane, who yes. I haven't shut up about for the entire Keanu Reeves John Wick uh, little series. Oh yeah, he's been great in these. Love him. I love him too. But yes, this is uh, yeah, this is our last John Wick episode, technically. Yes. Well, there's not a fourth one unless. Uh, John Wick Chapter 4, The Ian McShane Chronicles is coming out anytime soon. <laughs> um, which I hope it is. But No, it's going to be all the hobo people and the uh... Feed the Birds Tuppence Lady and the old lady from Home Alone. <laughs> I told you, <laughs> they're taking over. Lord. The Hobo Chronicles. <laughs> the Hobo People Chronicles. <laughs> I, we should say, just in case it... Uh, wasn't clear this will be spoilery spoilery on oh yeah on john wick three uh parabellum chapter three chapter, chapter three chapter three john it's such Parabellum. a long title for a john wick movie john wick chapter three parabellum <laughs> the title is more words than keanu speaks in the whole movie <laughs> oh i'm not doing i'm not gonna do my uh Keanu impression again but again there was some lines of dialogue in this movie that are just so very Keanu Reeves <laughs> are you pissed Morgan <laughs> <laughs> yeah I kinda am <laughs> are you ready John yeah I think I am <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's perfect. But it it's is perfect. perfect. It's perfect for Keanu. I no, I I too am looking forward to the Lawrence Fishburne slash Bird Lady from Home Alone two movie. Yes, and like all these little nods, I like to think you know him sitting in that chair, I was waiting for him to offer. <laughs> Him a blue pill or a red pill. <laughs> oh, yeah, like at the towards the end. <laughs> yeah, when, uh, and then like when Braun was introduced, I was like, <laughs> crown for king. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy pouring the gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, <laughs> and all those like times, yeah. um, like 
he would disappear <laughs> in like the John. crowd and stuff. Oh yeah. Yes. It was very Halloween. Was like, it was very I'm Batman. It was I'm Batman. It was very <laughs> Batman, but it was also very yes. Michael Myers. Yes. Which of course the boogeyman, the Baba Yago, is very uh they are the it's same person. John John Wick is Michael Myers. It's Michael Myers. And also yeah. Batman. The baby. Uh, was quite a yeah, almost it felt a lot of the time kind of like a Batman movie. It did. Uh, it did. This one, As, you know, with the whole the big, um, and we'll get into we'll get into it all. But generally, the 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 main fight in the Continental, uh, the climax of the movie, felt very very Batman for me. Like it did. He was going back into the vault to get his new weapons and. Alfred slash Ian McShane was just sat there drinking, <laughs> yeah, his, with his, glass, drinking like, his wine. Cheers. <laughs> with the dog. And I liked Le- Lance Reddick, the concierge. Who, he had a little bit of action. He did. I liked that. And you know, he's yeah. been my low key favorite character throughout the whole thing. Yes. So I'm glad he got some, <laughs> some uh, good action. Uh, he's like the Lucius Fox of the uh, John yeah. Wick. Universe. Did you see my uh, Facebook post the other day? Your Facebook post. <laughs> Every hero has a black dude. It's very <laughs> true. <his> back. <laughs> it's shockingly true. Yeah. Um, that never gets anywhere near as much credit as they deserve. As they no, deserve. So <laughs> that's uh, so mad props to Lance Reddick. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Buddy. Who does admittedly speak like he's from Wakanda? Yeah, um, but he's probably like Nigerian or something. So, or supposed to be the I, I don't know the character. I don't know where the actor's from. I don't know where Lance. You should Reddick watch Fringe. You would really like Fringe. That's where I know him from. Fringe. Yeah, it's a show. What is Fringe? It's um Morgan kind hasn't of seen like, Fringe. <laughs> it's a good show. You actually I think you would really like it. Um it's kind of about um uh, I guess like X File ish kind okay. of um like multiverses actually come into play, weird happenings. It's like uh this lady, she's like solves like weird happenings. And then she teams up with like this eccentric doctor and then his son is there who has to kind of like control his eccentric father. Okay. And he ends up kind of helping her solve these weird things that happen. And uh, Lance Reddick, he's like her boss. Okay. So, so not a TV show for Josh McCougar. Uh, no, no, he'd probably be a little scared. <laughs> And uh, with like you should be scared of me, <laughs> calling me out on live, whatever, Macuga. Kind of want to get into that actually, <laughs> right before we even start talking about John Wick. Yeah. Um, I've That's heard really that funny. Josh Macuga has challenged you, or has uh, not maybe not directly <laughs> challenged you, but thinks no. he can beat you in a match. Yeah, in the he was going through the rankings. He's twenty-two, and he I'm is old. <laughs> no, I'm 22 yeah, years 22. old. Yeah. Um, and I'm 13 years old. <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, I guess they were going through the rankings and he was like looking at all the people who were higher ranked than him. And he's like, oh yeah, Ginny the Machine? Oh, I could totally beat her. Oh yeah, I could totally beat her. Ah, 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 yeah. No, <laughs> that's, a, that's a fairly comfortable... No, you can't. <laughs> and... and uh, there it is. There it is, guys. <laughs> get, get, uh, get on the twitters and let's make that match happen. Because, yeah. let's be fair, Janine would probably knock out, or at least technical knockout, Josh yeah. McCougar. As much as we all down. like Josh McCougar, <laughs> he's a generally wonderful human being. But that is beside the point. John Wick three. <laughs> made me realize that the whole series of John Wick takes place in the sa- in the space of about two weeks. It does, because they all kind of, like, start where the last one ended. Yeah. Um, and this one does that right as the last one ended. John is on the run 
as he was right at the end after he had been excommunicado. Excommunicado. Well, he had an hour head start. So he did. The excommunicado had an hour before it was actually in effect. Yeah, but we see uh, we see that come into play. And we see every person, including Jason Mantzoukas, yes. try and kill him. Um, well, he doesn't try and kill him, but he's in the movie, and that was that was that was one of two acting. Oh, that was one of two uh, casting choices that completely took me out of the movie. <laughs> really? It was Jason Mantzoukas as that the 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 hobo guy with Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> Would you rather have seen the Tuppence lady or the lady from Home Alone Two? Yes. <laughs> or you know, anyone not not someone that's recognised for being a complete idiot with a lot of his characters. <laughs> hey, young man. Yeah. Like um, like J- what is it? But I like Jason Derek Manson in the Good Place. Is that what his name is in the Good Place? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I no, I like him. I like him a lot. And I really like this movie. I mean I really like this movie. With what it was uh with the way I felt about the first two. I thought the first I thought the first one was a great personal story and a really simple obviously it was very simple, but it was really the personal story of that that I liked a lot. And in the second one it was the whole world building and the almost the technical aspects of it that I really liked a lot, like the way it was shot and the the sort of the oh yeah smoothness like the subtle of the touches action. of like the reflections yeah. and things and yeah. And just the way the action felt. This one I felt was the best of both. Because it was a personal story for John to get sort of redeemed in the community. Yeah. Um but it also was just so beautifully shot and the action was insane, especially oh, yeah. for the opening. And I loved that with some of the like longer fights, there wasn't any music, just like the fight that he had with Common in two. Yeah. That you just kind of were able to focus on that. There was no sound, just the sound of like, you know, the fighting sounds. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciated touches like that. I um Ad- admittedly forgot about something there's actually three casting choices that uh took me out of the movie okay um, the first one was jason manzoukas when what does he say to him he says something like they're coming for you john tick tock tick tock or something <laughs> like time's running out <laughs> like the mad hatter or something <laughs> <laughs> jason manzoukas should it's play the mad birthday. hatter it's your own birthday <laughs> 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 Would you like a little Just more tea? For some tea. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Jason Mazuka's now just I could actually. sat at a table drinking tea with a, <laughs> with the March Hare and Alice? <laughs> yes, just singing a very merry and birthday <laughs> to, to you, you. <laughs> to me, <laughs> to you. <laughs> Okay, so what were the other two <laughs> casting choices you were not happy with? Well, it was in uh, the other one was in the opening as well, where obviously the 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 actual first sort of half hour or so is just insane with the action. Uh, it yeah. is ridiculous. It is the be- It is some of the best continuous action I've ever seen. Like oh, yeah. this side of the raid. <laughs> because the raid is just a whole movie of that. But this is, you know, the raid doesn't take a lot of time to, uh, you know, it, to slow down. Yeah. It is just go, go, go. And that's what the first sort of half hour of this movie felt like. And it was so well done. And there were some nasty things happening. Oh, yeah. Eyes gouged out. J- John <sighs> just being a general badass keanu uh, all the training i love him <laughs> i love him putting that gun together just to shoot one guy yeah. in that scene oh, i've got to do all this right now and don't shoot <laughs> right. yeah. and that was kind of it almost felt at times in that like a bit of a western because those guns he was using were kind of 
what Clint Eastwood would use. Yeah. In those and the fact that he also got on a horse at one point. Oh my gosh, that was so awesome! And getting the horse to like kick people in the yeah. face. It's the best. It was the, that. Yes. The 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 death by horse kick is a very unique thing, and that's just what I. Yeah. Another thing that I absolutely love, but the second casting choice of the opening that took me out of the movie was the uh, the the basketball player who plays for the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers. Who I will probably oh, I will probably mispronounce his name, but he was the huge dude. Oh, the book in the library. Yeah, he killed somebody with a book. He killed he killed him with a book. Don't yes. know how he managed to kill him with a book, but it. So that guy's a basketball player. He is a basketball player who currently plays for Philadelphia. Oh. Um, his name is Boban Marjanovic. So that took you out of it because you knew him as a that took me out of it player. because I thought, wait a minute, he what? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, hey, they needed a big guy. They did need a big guy, and he was fine, right? He he was a little fun little cameo uh, for for those okay. fans of Philadelphia basketball. Okay, and what was the third? I think I can guess. But... <laughs> it was Jerome Flynn. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of useless. Well, it wasn't even the fact that he was useless. And, it was the fact that he, that he comes in. He comes in using the stupidest accent of all time. Accent? Oh yeah, I was not a fan. And it's just like, Bron, <laughs> what are you doing? And then he proceeds to get his balls chewed off <laughs> and shot in the knee. <laughs> all he does, yeah. all he does, is give you the exposition of. He's give you a bit of world building exposition, right? That's all he kind of yeah. does. Um, there's a guy that's above the table and he finds you and la 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 la. Yeah. Okay. But let's, I'm going to take let's... your dog and you won't let, give me your dog so I'm going to shoot your dog so then your dog's going to eat my balls and then you're going to kill all my guys and yeah. that's the end of me. But let's get up to <laughs> uh, let's get up to there. So John's all being hunted down, hunted down at the first in the first half hour. Uh, he ends up getting a, a transport to Casablanca yes. in Morocco, uh, which is where Jerome Flynn's residing for some reason, <laughs> despite the fact that he's the most un-Moroccan person you've ever seen. Yeah, and so I guess, was that supposed to be a Moroccan accent? Um, no, I think it was supposed to be an Eastern European accent. Yeah, it was just weird. Like, I don't even know what he was doing. Because it's like, I know, I just hear him as bronze yeah. when, when he was trying to do it. Like, it just didn't work. Look, even when, even when Jerome Flynn speaks in his regular voice these days, I'm like, oh, that's weird, talk uh, normal. Yeah. He is, talk like Bron. He is talking normal. He doesn't actually talk like Bron. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was weird. But Halle Berry was involved there. Oh, my gosh. And Halle she Berry was great. And that best. whole sequence, one of the sequences I mentioned had no music. Yeah. You just focus on the fights. And she was in there doing, like, the same awesome stuff he was doing. Like, you could tell she was, like... She really put the work in. Oh, yeah. And they just make me feel terrible because <laughs> they're like 20 years older than me. They're in their mid-50s and they're doing shit like this. And I'm sitting here talking about it. <laughs> well, well who's, to say that, who's to say that when you get to your mid-50s, you won't be doing that sort of stuff. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Uh, if Halle Berry can do it, Janine the Machine can do it. Yeah. After I eat a whole family size bag of sour cream and onion chips. After you, mm. after, definitely <laughs> after you do that. Though. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but no, I, uh, I really liked Halle Berry in this. She wasn't in it as much as I thought she might be. Yeah. But, uh, she was kind of only in the... Morocco part, right? Because she was, yeah. what is she? The so she's head... the Winston of Morocco. Yeah, she's the Ian McShane of Morocco. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we get another John Wick world tour. We go to Morocco. We now know the existence of three continentals: the New York one, the 
uh, Rome one. Rome one and, and the Moroccan the one. The Casablanca one. Yes. Um, Humphrey Bogart was not involved. It's no, he was not. kind of a shame, but he wasn't. <laughs> Maybe that's the type of accent Jerome Flynn was trying to do. I don't know. It was all over the place. <laughs> but yeah, that sequence was insane with the dogs. And I loved how when like a guy was dead and the dog was still just like tugging on him. <laughs> I'm sorry that made me laugh. <laughs> You just like uh, dogs <laughs> killing people and then yeah, not but it's like the guy's someone. like dead <laughs> and the dogs just still tugging on him. I don't know. That made me laugh. No, there's quite a few. There's quite a, a lot of humor actually in the yes. movie, which is strange it compared is. to the first two, especially the first one. Yeah, um, I think it gets a little more. There's a bit of humor in the second, but this one was. In some, uh, in some ways, was kind of all played for humor. Sometimes, yeah, like even when he goes to see the doctor guy, and then like he yeah. tells him, "Oh, just shoot me here and here," and before he can even finish explaining, he just like shoots him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's in the like, yeah. That's like that. that's that's in the opening, isn't it? That's when everybody's scared of helping John because they'll get killed themselves. Yes. It's all very... It goes a long way. The high table is a powerful thing. Oh, yeah. And then you get the adjudicator coming in and... Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Asia Kate Dillon. Great. I've never seen her or heard of her. I believe. She... Actually, I believe uh, she is non-binary. And she was in Orange is the New Black. Oh, like I, I, I say she, it's they, because hey. if she, if uh, they yeah. are non-binary, we must yes. Asia Kate say Dillon. They. Uh, to to okay. uh, she uh, she again. I'm just, I'm ghost guys. I'm ghost. Uh, <laughs> Asia Kate Dillon was great. Uh, yes. Way better than in Orange Is the New Black. Ruby Rose. <laughs> <laughs> what was going to say then Ruby Rose? Oh, way better than Ruby Rose. Let's not get into <laughs> Ruby Rose. I'm, uh, yeah. The, yeah. We, we've all, we've all, we've, we, we, we've, we've been there. We, we've yeah. done that. As far as Orange is um, the New Black cast members go, Asia Kate Dillon, much higher. Than Ruby Rose. On the uh, quality scale in, in John Wick movies. Yeah. But yeah. And I decided to watch a Batgirl trailer today. And Oh the yeah, Batwoman one? Still, the Batwoman, yeah. Um, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Yeah, no. No. Mm. Like the trailer's good. It looks like it'd be a good show, except for <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, her acting is very stiff and her oh, line delivery dear. is not great. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, the adjudicator showed just the amount of power that the, the high, high table has. really has. You know, uh, comes in and um, sort of takes out Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, with his seven... Seven cuts seven for seven cuts, sins yeah. or whatever it was. Seven bullets. Or seven bullets, I don't know. I'm just thinking of seven deadly sins for some reason. Yeah. Seven they cuts for seven, seven bullets. They gave him seven bullets for a seven million dollar bounty. Oh yeah, and then so he got seven cuts for that. And that's where he turns. Yeah, like that, I. That's where he turns back up at the end on that throne yeah. when he's all cut up and slashed. I thought he was dead. Yes. Yeah, because it looked like that's why I think why they kind of did it kind of from far away so it would look more gruesome. Yeah. But yeah, but I appreciated like the way you know this is the third one and the first two kind of have built things up. So they did a pretty good job of expanding the world even more mm -hmm. and still making you be able to follow it and understand it. Definitely. For the most part. Like I was fascinated by the idea of the elder. Yeah. Even though he's like. He was the dude. My age. He was the dude <laughs> from, from Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. The actor. Yeah. He was, uh, yeah. Wasn't that he the actor one? was an actor oh i don't i forget now but he was he was one of the yeah. uh 
the yeah, truth. Yeah, he was the of... one who was an actor, who was trying to be an actor. Okay. Yeah. He was like yeah, the, but he, yeah, no, he he looks like my age, and he's the elder. So what does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think it's elder in terms of years. I think it's elder in terms of power, um, and also mysticism yes, because this is it. It got kind of godlike for a little bit. It did. Uh, go to the edge of the desert and. Walk, he will find walk you. until you cannot walk any further, and he will find Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. Thanks, Jerome. <laughs> Thanks, Brom. Um, yeah. Before, yeah, you set, tell us that before you get, you know, everything bitten off. Uh-oh. It's most unpleasant, and he made yeah. a horrible noise when he was screaming, and yeah. <laughs> Though. And speaking of, um, you know, we talked about comedy and being a little bit more funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what did you think of um, uh, the fanboying, the John Wick fanboying that was happening? I absolutely loved it. <laughs> what is the guy's name? What is that? The, 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 uh... He's the host of Iron Chef America. <laughs> Who is? <laughs> the guy, that Japanese the guy. guy. Yeah, I mean, he was like a martial artist and like was in a martial arts movies like back in the day. And then he became the host of Iron Chef America because his uncle was the host of Iron Chef in Japan. <laughs> Mark, Mark de Cascos. Yes. He's the, the, so the, I was the waiting host. for him to say, Ole Cuisine. Because <laughs> that's what he says before the people start cooking wow. on Iron Chef America. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, I I thought he was hilarious. To be honest with you, I really appreciated the humor in this. Maybe this is what should have taken me out of the movie, but it was really funny. Yeah. Um. Um, But yeah, no, like he was silly like that on Iron Chef. Like he'd be doing like flips and like being very exaggerated, like taking a bite of an apple, like really dramatically. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. No, I. So I like I knew him to be a martial artist and like be in movies. Okay. But I know him most recently as the host of Iron Chef America. <laughs> so it was kind of funny to see him back in like a reactiony role yeah. and then still being kind of funny about it. Yeah. So I thought that worked. Maybe he's blending <laughs> his two worlds together. Yeah. Um I th- so no I th- I liked him. I thought he was great though. I thought I I actually really liked him. And uh, there's that one guy from The Raid that's in it as well. Um, See, I've never seen The Raid. Yeah, he, Janine hasn't seen Janine hasn't the seen raid. The Raid. <laughs> uh yeah. Not uh was he the same dude that was in The Force Awakens? No, no, that's another dude. But there's one there's one guy that's uh Oh no, because there was like three of them that were in The Force Awakens, right? Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know when uh, when they're on the, the, the Falcon with the Wrath Tars in The Force Awakens? Oh, yeah. And there's those two gangs that are after her. Yeah, Han. and one of them is for, like uh, some people from the raid. One of them is some people from the raid, and I think he is one of them. But he's he's mm-hmm. one of the two... Uh, that, that's, that were fanboying? Yeah, that are like... <laughs> It is such an honor to fight with you, John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they like help him up. <laughs> yeah. We we can't believe we are fighting with John Wick. This is so great. Yeah, <laughs> totally uh, geeking out. Yeah, but there's <laughs> just but then they're just like, please kill us, John. Please, please kill us, John. <laughs> yes, we want to be killed by you, John. <laughs> uh, very very <sighs> strange. Yes, but great. I really, I really liked that. Um, I mean, in terms of, in terms of the kind of story of it, it is just very much a sort of John trying to get a bit of, he's trying to get back in, he's trying to get back in because he, he he's fully out now, he's trying to do everything he can to try and help himself. Yes. And reinstate himself. And there's a bit of twisty twisty going on as well. There's yes. a bit of a bit of playing going on with Ian McShane and with the adjudicator and with um But I mean, do you think he was 
all self-motivated or do you think he felt like you know that was the only way he could get what he wanted and still maybe save John in a way who Ian McShane yes yes no I ex- I think exactly that I uh I do not think John Wick 4 if and when that may happen will be John going after Winston or yeah. anything like because, that. Because, I mean, even the concierge, he was just like, you know, well played. Because, yeah. I mean, what else could he do? I think yeah. I think if, if Lance Reddick hadn't have said well played to him... Then, yeah, we would have been, we like, w- wondering. Then we would have been wondering. But the fact that he said that is just like, oh, okay, Ian McShane knows what he's doing here. John Wick is the boogeyman. And very much like Michael Myers at the end of the movie isn't there anymore yeah oh no where's and I John think <laughs> Winston does make a point to say that he like has uh alliances that run kind of far mm. and makes a point to say you know that you know there's a lot of us in New York and we're in New York or whatever yeah so I feel like yeah there might be an uprising of all the assassins in New York to kind of okay. go after the high table yeah, I think that's probably I think that's probably correct. And I'm sure uh I'm sure Asia Kate Dillon will come back. Oh yeah. Uh and yeah, I I uh I look forward to that actually. I think that might I think you might have hit it. I think you might have hit the nail on the head right there, Janine. Oh, yeah. With that it'll be cuz he does say like you know, this, you might be the high table, but we are New York City. And yes. it's just like, yes, Ian McChain. <laughs> I do like Ian McChain. I do, he was great. <laughs> yeah, I do like Ian McChain a lot. Uh, I... And he got to, he got to do the uh, roll credits, as they say. He did. Oh, <laughs> he did. Yes. He got to say parabola. (laughs) Of course, he didn't say it as awesome as I say it, but, you know. Nobody says it as awesome as you say it. He also didn't say paraballoon, like I was saying last (laughs) With the last week. Umblaut. It was just... That's what you call it, right? Umblaut. Yeah. It was just parabellum, which is prepare for war. And you got those... And you got the little... Uh, subtitles, things that we've yeah, kept with the we've, emphasis. We've kept I love the emphasis loving. on puppy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've kept loving those throughout the whole thing. I've really been a fan of uh, a fan of those. You get those again, especially when it says this, because it is um, in you know to get to gain peace. Is it prepare for war? To gain peace, prepare for war. Yes, I believe that's the line. Yeah. But it's said in by Ian McShane in the Latin while he's pretending to be Alfred, sat there with his glass of wine or whiskey or whatever he was drinking. <laughs> Just cheers with, while you guys get more weapons. <laughs> with John's dog in the Continental yes. Vault. <laughs> just chilling, chilling. Uh, <laughs> that's really funny as well, because when they just kept coming back in and he <laughs> yeah. was just sat there, hey... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you want you want some help? No? Fine. <laughs> no, no. Okay. And he, he kept putting the phone down on the adjudicator. Yeah. He's just like, hello, we are hitting no. <laughs> Which was kind of a fun callback to the first one when he tries to call John and make peace and John just hangs <laughs> up on him. I didn't, see, I didn't <laughs> clock on to that. John yeah. Wick goes deeper yeah. than we think it does. It does. The layers, all the layers. Do you think there's any more to this world that needs to be built up now? Um, well, just to see the high table, like how oh, that I, whole I, thing yeah, works, I really. Guess. The gears with that. And maybe get a little bit more with the Elder, because that was kind of probably my least favorite part. Like, I don't feel like that was fleshed out enough to really fit into everything that was happening. I think that's fair. Like, like, like he's above the table, but like... I, I wish we would have gotten kind of more about how that works because that was kind of my least favorite part because it kind of took me out of it. Okay, I mean the whole so I would have the whole uh, Morocco stuff is kind of look. It's the it's you know the second act and you've just you've just come out of that 
ridiculous opening. Yeah. Where you're all hyped up and excited. And then you go into that and it is kind of a different movie once they're in yeah. Morocco. Um, obviously, they come back to New York and everything. And the last, uh, you know, the, the last act is kind of awesome as well. Yeah. Just as so much as the first. If I had to pick something that, like, I wasn't very much into, it would be that I, whole elder thing. Yeah, I would say it's probably is the weakest part of the movie, but I'm I I'm saying that this is quite possibly my favourite of the three John Wick movies. Really? Yeah. Just because I think it was the best of the both of them. Yeah, you get the personal with the... Yeah. Intense action and more complex story. Because I feel like I I really like two compared to a lot of people that I've heard. Like they like it, but yeah, I I kind of really liked it. Um, maybe more so than the first one. I th- the first one was was perfect for what it did because it was so simple. But I think I like that little bit of added complexity and world building to stuff. Well, I I think the first one's still my favorite because of the surprise of it. Like I didn't know what to expect from this movie. I didn't know what to expect from Keanu yeah, and the series, fair. and um, just to see these stunt guys really do some creative, interesting things we hadn't seen before. Um, the emotional aspect was so well done mm-hmm. and just the kind of montage of storytelling in the beginning was so well set up. I mean, he had that dog for a day, but you felt the emotion of losing it and what drove all of this. Yeah. And I loved Willem Dafoe and I loved, um, what's his name? David, David Nyquist. Michael David? Nyquist. Michael Nyquist. I liked him and stupid Theon. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any Game of Thrones actors in number two? I guess just Ian McShane. Well, yeah, I suppose Ian McShane is. But technically, he was in one episode of Game of Thrones. So He was. I do but, wish we could yeah, see more I just, of him. I need to. Need a spin-off, spin-off Game of Thrones with Brother Ray's well, group. Ian Glenn needs to be in Ian. four, and I will be very happy. But does Ian Glenn speak using his normal accent or his yes, Jorah accent? Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, I kind of like. Oh, I kind of like Jorah accent. Yeah, because Ian Glenn's normal accent is way yeah. too soft. Yeah, I like his, you know, gravitas. Yeah. I'm sure when he's explaining things. Yeah. When he was. <laughs> well, we've only got one episode left, Janine, and by the time by the time the people hear this, the damn show has ended. Well, yes, it has. Um, as mu- much to the delight or perhaps disappointment of the internet, because they might not have anything to complain about anymore. Yeah, but um, please don't give fodder to the haters. Like they're laughing at us right now. Like, the non-show watchers are laughing at us right now. So please don't make it easy for them. <laughs> please. The non-show watch. Oh, the people that don't watch Game of Thrones are laughing don't at Game watch of the Thrones show. Fans. They're just loving that we're, like, turning on the show. Well, not us in particular. No, but us. that most are turning on the show. Well. Not us. <laughs> to quote Endgame, not us. As, to, to quote Endgame, not us. <laughs> Can you tell me the the exact time of of quote of that? What is not us in Endgame? Where was that? Endgame was a when long. He's talking movie. to Natasha, and he's talking about how he in the meetings he tells people to move on with their lives, and but he says, but not us. So you, see, you're very good. And it was with used. Quotes. It was oh well, it was used in the trailers. But oh yeah, you didn't want to watch any trailers. Exactly. So see, see. whatever. And my end game experience. Morgan hasn't seen any end game trailers. My end, <laughs> Boo. <laughs> my, end, my end game experience was made all the better for not seeing. No, you trailers. wouldn't know. You wouldn't know if it was better or worse. How how would you even know? Because I didn't expect a thing. <laughs> That's why. Um, okay. 
You forced me to watch the goddamn It Chapter 2 trailer. You were like, play watch it. I want to talk to you about it. Watch the It Chapter 2 trailer. <laughs> but it was so good. And wasn't it a really good trailer? Yeah. And now it's going to, it's ruined the whole movie for you. Yeah, it has. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, it hasn't. But I'm not Morgan watching hasn't the... hasn't seen trailers. Well, I force you to watch movies and I force you to watch trailers. That's how this works. You've given me too much power. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you are just way too powerful. You are the, you And are as you've seen with uh, Danny, um, it's dangerous to have too much power. <laughs> <laughs> not when it's for a good cause. And I'm as old as the elder, and he has all the power too. How do you know so. the elder might be like seven hundred? Yeah, we'll see. Well, you don't know. He might be, he might be one of those. He might be a god. Who does? Who knows if he might if he if he is a god or not? I'd like to think he is a god. That's why I are you a god? <laughs> yes. Yes. You always say yes. Also, you always say yes. No. I don't know. Hashtag Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, that's from Ghostbusters. It's been a long time since I saw Ghostbusters. Well, you better watch it. The 35th anniversary is coming up. Yeah, it will be, actually, won't it? 1984. Mm -hmm. uh, which also means it's the 35th anniversary of other movies from 1984. Once Upon a Time in America. Ooh. June of 1984. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I suppose I'll have to watch Ghostbusters for the first time in like eight years or so. And um, I may or may not be doing something cool pertaining to the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters. Do you, but... you want to leave the tease there for now? <laughs> yes. Let's leave the tease yes, there for do, now. Let's do that. Do you know you might, may the or may not be doing something cool for the 35th <laughs> anniversary of Ghostbusters? May or may not. May or may not. That's yes, up we, in we shall see. the air. But yeah, Ghostbusters is kind of special. It's the first time I ever heard my name in a movie. So as a kid, that was very exciting for me as a kid who really loved movies. You know when the first time I heard my name in a movie was, aside from the actor Morgan Freeman? <laughs> when? In, uh, with, with Morgan Stark. Oh. There's not many Morgans in movies. No. So then, yeah, you would have heard it in uh, Infinity War. Yeah. Well, yeah. Unless unless there was a random Morgan somewhere. I don't really pay attention to that. But yeah, and you haven't seen a lot, so... Uh, I have. We might have, to do, we might have to do a Morgan month Nobody... and pick movies that you haven't seen where people... There's a character named Morgan. Nobody in the... <laughs> or we'll have to do just a Morgan Freeman month. <laughs> Nobody in the... 60s and 50s was called Morgan Janine. <laughs> yeah. I think we should do that. We'll do a Janine oh. Garofalo month. Ignore that. <laughs> we'll do a Janine we'll do... Garofalo month. And a Morgan Freeman month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do... Um. I mean, I'm sure there's quite a few Morgan Freeman movies you haven't seen, right? I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a few. There's maybe less Have than you, you seen... think. Have you seen Lean on Me? No. See, you're just going to uh. name all these now. No, <laughs> no, I haven't seen. No, I haven't seen that. No, I haven't seen that. And you're going to make all the people hate me as as and they that's always a good start. do. So, we have the rest of the year planned out, but next year we will do a, a Janine Garofalo month Janine and a Morgan Gar month. I'm looking forward to the Janine Garofalo month, to be honest with you. Well, like there's no famous people named Janine besides Janine Garofalo. There's, no, like, there's got to be Janine's, someone. There's there's a production designer named Janine Opwall, and she spells it exactly like me. There's another Janine something who's spelled exactly like me, who's like, um, I think, I think it might be the same Janine. Maybe when I watch Grey's Anatomy, I see her name in the credits, like for like casting or something, and it's spelled just like me. So there are plenty of Janines in the industry, but Janine Garofalo is probably the most famous Janine. Yeah, well, let's do it. I'm way more interested in doing a Janine Garofalo month, to be honest with you. But, uh, or series or whatever it is. But yeah, John yes. Wick 3 Parabolum. 
Parabellum. <laughs> Parabellum. Parabellum. Pa- so I really enjoyed this movie. The action was off the charts. Crazy. Yeah, um, it really was. The world building was great. Like, I, like I didn't know of a way for them to expand without making it too complicated. Mm-hmm. And I think they, you know... They really did that. And they were able to. You know, that's what I. That's what I love about a lot of stuff when it comes to, uh, you know, fandoms and stuff like that, like major fandoms and fantasy worlds and stuff like that. It's the worlds themselves that I love more than the stories in those worlds. Yeah. Very similar with Game of Thrones. That's why. I'm never too fussed about what happens in Game of Thrones because that's what happens and we have to deal with that. Yeah, so um, stop crying. What I... Get stop, throw away your stupid petition, like, please. What I... It's not going to do anything. No, it isn't. No, it is the stupidest, <laughs> you just <look> stupid. <laughs> asinine thing. Um... But no, it is what it is. it is. And yes, you love it. We all love it. And you can be disappointed about it. Of course it, you can. But like, that is your really? Right. That is your right to be dis... Your right is to be disappointed by it. Your yeah. right is not to try and change it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm sure your, it is your we, right we to can not all come watch. up with an idea that's like better than what we think happened. But yeah, like, we, of it's course. not going to change it. But why bother so, because you'll just annoy yourself yes so you might as well just try to find things in it that you like exactly and just be done with it but yeah that's why it is what it is at this point yeah but that's why i i i really like the you know two and and three of john wick and that's why i say that kind of john wick three is maybe my favorite because it is um that mix of the personal story with the world building because yeah. what I like about any world is the is the world itself, whether it's you know yeah. Westeros or Harry Potter or Star Wars or Middle Earth or whatever it is. Right. But yeah, I just appreciate that like little nuggets that were just in the first one were able to build so well yeah. in the second and third. I, like and I, yeah, like you see the continental, and you see that there's rules. And that's enough to kind of get you curious about, okay. And then I think they were very smart about expanding on that in the next two films. So we'll see how it grows in yeah. John Wick Chapter 4. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to, to learning more about this s- sort of stuff. And yeah, like you said, with the high table, I want to see the high table. I want to see how the high table operates. I want to see the cool room they sit in. Because it's yes. guaranteed I to be. I want to see the high of, table. <laughs> I want to see the high table. Is it a table? Is it even a table? Yeah. Is it an actual table? <laughs> Is it? I don't know. It's so exciting. Um, yes. Keanu Reeves will be 87 years old by the time uh, John Wick 4 comes out because he's what, 85 now or something like that? Yeah, and he'll be doing more action than I've done <laughs> today. <laughs> uh, no, Kia, I, I joke, but we all do know that Keanu Reeves is a vampire. And yes, will... he will actually be 55 in September. See, he looks so good for 55 as well, yeah. doesn't he? He looks yes, so good. and I think good. Halle Berry is 52. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Hollywood will do, will do to your people. It'll give you the opportunity to look like that. Although Keanu is uh, an incredibly down-to-earth human being. Yeah, still rides the subway, gives up his seat for people. He's just a very nice I saw, uh, person. I'm, I'm, I've seen, I've been told. I, yeah. saw, I, saw, I saw an interview with Keanu. Uh, he, he doesn't like... You were complimenting him. Okay, I'll stop. You, no, Keanu Reeves <laughs> doesn't like it when interviewers compliment him. Because he can't take a compliment. Because he's that's just like, adorable. no, no, I'm just, no, that's, well, that's very nice. Of, yeah, okay. Yeah. He's just like, Keanu, you're the nicest. He's like, no, I'm oh. not the, n- it's, no. It's, yeah, Keanu. Yes, Keanu. But yeah, um, yeah, I saw a little clip of him on um, what was it? 
Stephen Colbert. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he had like the perfect answer for oh, what yeah. happens when you die. Yeah, so all that. <laughs> He's like, what happens when you die, Keanu Reeves? And he said, the people you leave behind will remember you. Something like that. Keanu, Probably not as eloquent as he said it. Keanu Reeves knocking it out the park as always. Yes. Uh, Which is also something I forgot to mention that I did like about the the whole elder part. So even though I didn't like that, I appreciated like him actually asking him the question. Well, like, you know, you seem like you have nothing left. So why are you fighting so hard to stay alive? Mm-hmm. And his reason was so that he would be there to remember his wife. Because if he wasn't there to remember her, no one else would remember her. Yeah. And I, I loved that so much. Yeah. That was such a good exchange of like, because yeah, like you don't really think about it. Like at this point, you know, he doesn't really have anything left. So why is he fighting so hard to stay alive? Yeah. So that was a great question to, to ask in this movie. And that was a perfect response. So it made you like love him even more and really get behind his motivations even more and understand him even more because i didn't even think about that until it was asked and i'm like you know what yeah like why is he like (laughs) yeah Yeah. i like completely (laughs) i'm surprised his answer wasn't because there's gonna be john wick chapter (laughs) four (laughs) yeah i uh i completely (laughs) agree and then of course he cuts off his own finger yeah his wedding ring finger yes which is uh, is really nice and uh he goes for the rest of the movie with half a finger he looks like partial yes. davos yes oh something we didn't touch on was his like history with the little the russian ukrainian whatever oh, place oh, with no. angelica houston we've not even mentioned that we're going <laughs> yeah, so we talked long. about morocco but we didn't talk about how he got there and who helped we're him get going there. so long and like his, we've not his even real name <laughs> his real name and his origins what was his which they like were... yeah okay so schmodown question what was his real name uh, i know I don't remember. Jadani Jovanovic. Or Jovanovic. Uh, As stated beautifully by Angelica Houston. Angelica Houston. Who everybody loves. And I was not expecting to see in this movie. The the only high witch. The only high witch. I don't want you, Anne Hathaway. I don't want you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, the only grand high witch. Angelica Houston is my grand high witch. (laughs) Uh, Not, however, the only Morticia Adams. No, but she's great. But she is great. She is great. Morticia Adams. She is generally great. But yeah, I really liked that. uh, That whole sort of Eastern, or the Russian sort of ballet slash wrestling whatever it was institution slash um red sparrow training slash red um, sparrow training black widow <laughs> black widow yeah. red sparrow training school it was nice i don't really know how to explain it but it was cool and then that kind of worked in his tattoo like all of them get that tattoo yeah because that's you know they're like orphaned children of this organization yeah i guess Ultimately, so, all round, yeah. John Wick 3 is a great movie. Yeah, like that was just some good like world building and character stuff that was just kind of like easily done with just a quick walkthrough, but it didn't feel super expositiony. Like no, even though it was, it wasn't like it wasn't like Jerome Flynn expositiony. No. <laughs> it was done a lot better than that. So I appreciated that little whole yeah. scene yeah and angelica is great of course and of course yeah. she is it's all... and she got punished for helping john wick i feel bad for her well, and her hands they all they all got punished <laughs> yeah she did yeah. lawrence fishburne did who yeah. uh i only found out is is the character's name is actually the bowery king yeah which is a great name which he gave his little shouty monologue he did and i liked that (laughs) i am the king (laughs) yes you are lawrence fishburne you are yes you are janine is that going to do us for i think so this episode of of morgan that hasn't seen it's maybe a little shorter than they have been of late but Mm -hmm. i think i mean and we and we i think we managed to get some fun little random tangents in there as well of course we did 
Freeman month and Janine Garofalo month. Janine and... Garofalo month. Um, yeah. <laughs> Super excited yeah. for that. Need it right now. <laughs> Some Game of Thrones talk. Yeah, I mean... We always got to get our Thrones talk in there. We have, even I mean, though we is, haven't this... seen the fun. <laughs> even though we haven't seen the finale. Yeah. Um, at this point. And we will have yeah. done by the time everybody's listening to this. I'm sure I won't want to, you know, live on Twitter anymore. Because... No. People are gonna hate it. Let's just be fair. I yeah, they will. I don't know. I'm gonna f- I'm so, I'm gonna find something in there that I like, as I have done with everything too. this season. Me and too. honestly, I've I've liked this season. I've liked me too. for the most for the most part. I mean, there's been a little couple of little weird things that have happened somewhere. Things, yeah, bronze but pointless I, in this season. Completely yeah. pointless. Yeah, just like in this movie. Just like in this movie. <laughs> Which I do love Jerome Flynn and I've loved Braun, but yeah, yeah I, I did not like how he was treated but, uh, this last season. It, it'll ruin your day to nitpick too much, guys. Yeah. It'll ruin but your day. I, 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 just one quick thing about Game of Thrones. I appreciate that um, people feel like they've just kind of thrown away all the arcs that people have made, but I just feel like it was all a way to show you that we've built up these people to what we want them to be but this season was basically showing you no that's who they were the whole time that's like that's well so. certainly in some circumstances that definitely is the case there are some people that have had completely transformative arcs look at Arya look at uh, Sansa yeah but it's still like they take you back to her from the start like you know you th- want her to be with uh, Gendry and no, no, no! But, I don't uh, want her to. Be with Gendry. I want her to be with Gendry. I mean, if you're not a girl, you wouldn't understand. Well, that but, may be yes. true. <laughs> that is uh, maybe true. Um, but yeah, there are certain things. I'm sure we could go on for another yes. half hour about that, and maybe that this is not the best time to do <laughs> that. Um, but yes, John Wick, chapter three. Parabellum. <laughs> Parabellum. Parabellum, as it's actually pronounced by yes, the glorious terrible. Ian McShane, uh, is a wonderful movie, and uh, I can't wait for any more instalments in this uh, franchise. franchise. What a great yeah. action franchise it is, by the way. Right? What a phenomenal action franchise it is. You'd struggle to find yeah. uh, a franchise that's actually consistently better throughout it, all of its movies because there's only three of them yeah okay but you will struggle yeah consistently good consistently strong like yes okay and... die hard one two and three are good but then you've got four and five okay well next year um you're going to be seeing a franchise that you have also been not excited to see that is an equally wonderful action franchise mm, just saying but next week we don't have that <laughs> next oh, week we don't. Uh, what do we have next week, Janine? <laughs> so our we will be on to our bonus film. Yes, and Keanu bonus. John Wick. Yes, since John Wick is pretty much Keanu through and through, we will be watching Point Break because Morgan hasn't seen Point Point Break. No. And uh, yeah, it was a tough decision between that and Speed, but you know I took some pity on him and I picked the one I thought he would probably enjoy more. Plus, I think it will prepare him for um, our Fast and Furious oh, series. No. <laughs> As the first Fast and Furious is basically Point Break with the cars. Well, I'll probably <laughs> like Point Break more because it's got Keanu and Patrick Swayze in it. Yeah. So I'm all there for that. Janine, what are you getting up to? What have you done? Where can all the good listeners of Morgan hasn't seen find you at um well nothing too crazy going on right now but um you can find me on twitter and instagram at janine dabin um you can check out my artwork at g9 design on instagram i have a patreon at janine lc um i write machine mondays on trivia sd.com so you can check out my little articles i write about schmodown related topics and uh yeah i have a t public shop uh g9 design on t public so yeah check me out have you got any matches coming up 
uh, perhaps. Perhaps. Another tease. All the teases. <laughs> All the teases well, today. I think it's already kind of been announced that I will be taking on white bread, vanilla white bread himself, Mike Kalinowski, finally. Yeah. So, but we don't know when. No. no. Okay. Okay. But it's happening. But it's happening and it will happen soon, guys. Yes. Uh, yes. Find uh, You can find this show on Apple Podcasts. On Spotify, on Stitcher, on Podbean, and Google Podcasts, and a bunch of other places where you can find podcasts on. That's the whole feed where you will get the main show, It's a Wonderful Podcast, with me and Nolan Dean. We are smack bang in the middle of Monster Movie May, and you can listen to the episodes on them. The giant ant movie that I have to pronounce like that. <laughs> And also on oh. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is a incredibly just perfect sci-fi movie. Um, so such such layers to that movie, Janine. You don't even realise Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You know that one, that silly one from the fifties with pod people aliens. So, Janine hasn't seen. Janine might not have seen, but oh my god, <laughs> it's not. It's so much more. It's wonderful. It is the best. Um, so, yeah, go on over to the main show. It is on this feed um, to listen to those and check out some more episodes of Morgan Hasn't Seen that you might have missed, you know? And like I said, go on over to Apple Podcasts and leave those uh, five-star rate and reviews. It really helps the whole feed expand and grow and we'll love you forever for doing that can also find the show on twitter at it's a wonderful one find me on twitter at the purple dawn with a three instead of the e in the because what janine three is the magic number very right i'm gonna get other people <laughs> to do my own catchphrase for me right now <laughs> uh, you can also find me on instagram at the purple dawn uh yeah use the hashtag morgan hasn't seen if you want to talk to us on twitter about this show and suggest things and janine's put a poll up i don't know if that poll will still be live by the time you're hearing this yeah probably not. Uh, but probably you not. can still weigh in but you can still weigh in and um it is about our drew barrymore series that we will have coming up um You'll probably be able to see the result, and you'll you can either get all excited or be all disappointed that it's not <laughs> one or the other. I yes. don't know, but guys, thank you for listening to another episode of Morgan hasn't seen until we are. Do they surf in Point Break? Yeah. Until they ask. Until a... we. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> until we are surfing yes, the waves with Patrick Swayze <laughs> and Keanu Reeves, who I believe his name is Johnny Utah, which yeah, is the stupidest it. name in the history of names. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.